Hello everybody, my name is Kevin Hurley and welcome to another Pest Ed training session. This session is going to be on baiting specifically for ants, but some of the same ideas we're going to use today follow through in all kinds of different baiting programs no matter what the product. Uh, today we're going to use this product, uh, it's called Advance 375A, it's just a, a bait that you can buy online or through your distributor. Um, we don't endorse any products here at Pest Ed, and we don't not endorse any products. This just happens to be one of the amp baits on the market, so we're going to use it today. You'll notice I'm wearing nitrile gloves. Uh, the label, which I'm going to refer to every once in a while here to keep me on track, doesn't require that you wear any PPE. I've, I've read it over and over. However, there's a statement. This is my fossil here from millions of years ago. There is a statement here that does say if on skin or clothing, rinse skin immediately with plenty of water. So that doesn't say in here I have to wear gloves, but it does tell me if I get it on my skin, I have to rinse my hands off so I wouldn't be able to do the job. So it's implied that I have to wear gloves. Though I'm not an attorney, so you'd have to talk to your attorney if you ended up in court on that one. But it's always a good idea, and um, a lot of people are allergic to latex, I'm one of them, so I use these nitrile gloves. They don't have that latex powder that causes your skin to break out. So the product is advanced, it's advanced granular bait, it's for ants. It's listed for indoor and outdoor use. Uh, it's primarily a structural bait though for ants that are outdoors but are coming inside or ants that are already inside. So we can use this, it's kind of a, it's very general in that way. However, it's not really labeled for entire lawns. This is not the kind of product you'd want to use for entire lawns. So let's take a look uh, at what we have here. We have a measuring device, we have a scale, and a little funnel. Now, oh, and I have my sunglasses, which I'm going to put on because it's high noon here in the middle of June in New York State. It's hot and I don't want to squint so much. This particular product you need a very little amount of. I travel around the country training people on how to use baits and how much they should use or weed and feeds, fertilizers with uh, broadleaf weed control or pre-emergent, that sort of thing. And it, it almost never fails that people are over applying. In other words, you're only supposed to use maybe a few ounces per thousand square feet and people are using a half a bag of a 40 pound or a 20 pound bag. So I want to show you really how little of this product you need to put out there. It's, I think it's going to amaze you how little you actually need to get the job done. So on this particular product, there are several different ways to apply it. You can just treat a mound directly, or you can broadcast with a hurdy-gurdy or any kind of broadcast sprayer, or you can you know, broadcast hand deliver it. This is an 8-ounce container. This 8-ounce container on a broadcast application will cover half an acre. Now, a half an acre is a half a football field. An acre is about 44,000 roughly square feet, so we're talking about 22,000 square feet. A massive amount of property to treat. So you wouldn't take a product like this and use half of it just going around the outside of a small home. So I'm going, to sh I'm going to measure this out for you. Maybe you've never seen it measured out. And I'm going to measure it out sh for you and show you. The label here has an option for treating 1,000 square foot sections. It also has an option for band applications around the outside. Now it says here that you're, you should use 0.3 ounces per 1,000 square feet. So 1,000 square feet is 10 feet by 100 feet long right it's a big area 0.3 ounces you maybe you've never taken the time to see what 0.3 ounces of a granular bait is so we're gonna take a look at that right now I got this digital scale so we could be as accurate as possible and I'm doing this outside here's a carpenter bee this is not a carpenter bee class and I'm not made out of wood um, <laughs> so he, he likes me though I have I have lots of carpenter bee friends they're over by the garage, and they tend to really enjoy eating the wood uh, or chewing through it. Now, they don't sting you. Um, 
I think the females have stingers, but you'd really have to go out of your way. To, I don't know what he's attracted to. Maybe he likes the abamectin. I, I, I don't know. That's the active ingredient in here. Is he gone, cameraman? Yeah. Okay, so we'll continue. Yep. Sorry for that. Um, so we have the scale. You can't just pour this pesticide on the scale, though, right? It's going to go all over the place. So here he is. To come up with a name for him, I think he's looking, you know, for a part in the movie. <laughs> um, very nice little guy. Go away, go away, and don't eat my deck. <laughs> um, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn it on, and we and we we're going to put it in this cap so we have a, a way to measure it. Now you can't just put it in the cap because look at this. Come on. Go on, because the cap has weight, right? The cap has weight. <laughs> <laughs> the cap has weight. So that would throw off our weight. So we have to put this on here, and the cap weighs 0.1 ounces. So we're going to hit tar, or depending on what country you're from, tear. Tear. But we'll put that, and it puts it back to zero. So now the weight, are you able to get that to zero? Can you see it? Yeah. And if I tip it up, maybe? Does that help? Yeah, that's Oops. good. So now I have to put it back. And I'm going to hit tear. So now it's at z point zero. Yeah, he likes the abamectin. Okay. So the label says, pardon me, the label says that we have, there's a couple different ways to do this. You may not, obviously, you're not going to carry this thing around in your truck, and every time you apply, you're going to put down, you know, well, I have to get my digital scale out. That's not how this is going to work. But you want to have a feel for it. Uh, so, they give you an idea of how much to use if you don't want to go to this trouble. So it says 0.4 ounces per thousand square feet. And then in parentheses, one tablespoon equals approximately 0.3 ounces of bait. So approximately, see paper's made out of wood. Mm. I guess he likes paper too. Come on. So, I don't understand this. It might be the bright colors on the gloves. No, but yeah. he's a wonderful bee. So I, I I'm losing track here. Here we go. So anyway, point three. It says approximately. Now we don't want to put down things in approximately. Uh, we're in New York State, and New York, as as many states are now, they're very specific. So if I said, oh, I approximately use this much, they wouldn't really like that. Good, he's on you. Uh, so we're gonna give you exactly the right amount. This is a tablespoon. Now, you don't want to use this if you, you know, make sure you clean this thoroughly. I mean, the pesticide will adhere to it. You can see we measured this before, and I don't know if you can pick up the little, is it possible to pick up the little residue? So there's always residue. You know, when you first look at this, it's clean, but it's not clean. So you're never going to use this again for food unless you thoroughly clean it. And you could. It's stainless steel, I suppose. Not a good idea. I'm not going to do it. So. Let's dump a little bit of this in here. You know, I'm going to put it over on the lawn in case a little spills out because that's where the ants are and it won't be a misapplication because we have ants crawling around out there. Now, this is set at zero. This is nowhere near a full tablespoon. You know what? I'm sorry. I got to put more in. There we go. Now we have kind of a rounded tablespoon. So let's see how much that weighs. And 0.2. That's 0.2. So I could fill that a little more and make it 0.3, which is the amount you would use per thousand square feet, a little bit more, maybe 0.4 ounces. But that's it. That's the amount. So we're going to go show you now how to do a measurement of a thousand square feet and show you how much of that pesticide we're going to put out in that area. And we'll probably just apply it with this. Okay? Okay, so welcome back. Now we're going to, a lot of times people haven't sat down and really figured out, well, what's a thousand square feet? So a lot of your baits out there will say use 0.4 ounces. For instance, in the case of Advance, Amp bait, it's 0.4 ounces per thousand square feet. And some other labels might say, oh, depending on what it is, uh, five ounces per, five full ounces per thousand square feet. So you really have to 
know what a thousand square feet is. And maybe none of you have actually taken the time to measure out a thousand square feet and see what that is. So we're going to do that now. Remember, the reason we're going to do that is because the particular label I was just discussing, the advanced ant label bait, says 0.4 ounces, which is a, probably a heaping tablespoon of this, is 0.4 ounces per thousand square feet. So you may just think, read the label, I know you all read the label, and you might say something like, oh, well, this is probably about right for 0.4 ounces. Maybe, maybe not. Or, well, that's about a thousand square feet, but you're not really sure. So uh, let's take a look at, we're gonna actually measure it. Whoops, and you better save this. I know where to save it. So we're gonna start with one stake, and I'm gonna pound this all the way down until it's one inch from the ground. No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna set it, actually, let's come over here. We'll set it right about here. It's been raining a lot, the ground's pretty soft. So, you get one of these handy dandy measures. I think I can, I think I can just stick it right there and it might stay. No, it's not gonna. Cameraman, I need you to step on that for me if you, if you would please. Now you gotta do two things at once, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're up to 10 feet right there. And I'm going to pound another one in. Whoops. That was foolish. <laughs> Retake. No, just kidding. All right, so 10 feet. Good. That's our width. Now, you're going to stay right on that thing. And I'm going to walk down here 100 feet because 10 times 100 is 1,000 square feet. Twenty. It's pretty far. Forty. Sixty. Oh my God. A thousand square feet's a lot. this thing and I'm walking this thing and all I'm gonna put out is a heaping teaspoon or a rounded teaspoon of this and all of this not very much tells you how effective the stuff can be but it's possible that people are going out there and shaking the whole bottle in a space like that so let's talk about a house, um, the outside of a house, I'll just do a real rough one. If it's one foot band and the house is 50 feet long, that's 50 feet times two, that's 100 feet. And let's say it's 30 feet wide, that's 30 and 30. So we got 50, 50, 160, right? So 160 square feet. This is a thousand square feet. So a tenth of this, you would only use a little bit of this 
for a house. This is for a broadcast application, but you could use less for a house. Now, the advanced label says you can even use more, though, for mound treatments and following trails. But I'm just giving you an idea that you don't have to put out pounds of this product or don't think in terms of bottles. You know, I've got a bottle of this. How far does that bottle go? Well, that bottle goes about two houses. You really shouldn't look at it that way. Look at ounces and, you know, apply the exact amount the manufacturer recommends. I wanted to just point out a couple other things. So this is for acrobat ants, carpenter ants, big headed, crazy field, harvester, little black. You know, all your standard ants. Now the label, interestingly, it says kills ants. So that's pretty general, including many common varieties of household ants. But it says including, it's not limited to. So you can interpret that, that there's a lot of other ants that are not on this label that you can treat with this product. And it would seem to follow what the label says. So the active ingredient in the product uh, is abamectin. Abamectin is a pesticide that's been around for 20, 30 years. It comes from the agricultural industry and now it's in the structural industry or it has been also for a couple decades too. Um, on this particular product you only need 0.011% which is 10 one hundredths, one thousandths, 11 one thousandths of a percent. So it hard, hardly any and the rest of the product is nothing but uh, attractants and food, things that ants like. Okay, it says on the label, this bait formulation combines a mixture of foods and the delayed action insecticide. So what's good about that using abamectin is that it's not going to kill all the ants in one spot. They're going to take it back, regurgitate it, feed it to their pupa, their larva. They wouldn't feed it to their pupa, but their larva. Um, they're going to pass it around the colony and it's going to crash the colony. This insecticide acts to reduce the population of worker ants and can cause an immediate halt in egg production resulting in colony elimination. Now let's get back to the amount we're going to use because we're we're about to do a little bit of an application around this structure and it says lightly sprinkle the product evenly in a band approximately one to two feet wide. Lightly sprinkle isn't really an amount is it? So I think you're still going to be stuck with the 0.3 ounces per thousand square feet because that's the application rate on the label. It doesn't really tell you that, well, if you're doing one to two feet, you can use a lot more. If you're doing a band of one to two feet, you can use a lot more. Uh, it goes on to say, treat the visible trails with approximately 0.3 to one ounce of product depending on the number of ants. I guess you got to sit down and count the ants but you can use up to an ounce of product on an ant trail. That's giving us a lot of leeway. Now we don't have to really stick to the 0.3 or 0.4 ounces per thousand square feet. The 0.4 ounces per thousand square feet would be only for a broadcast application in this case. It's important to read the entire label because you want to be able to follow all the regulations and not over apply, not under apply pesticides. You can also treat mounds. It says in here, use 1.5 to 2.1 ounces. In our case here, say this was 0.2, we're talking about five or six of these on a mound. It doesn't tell you how big the mound is or what kind of ant. So it gives you a really, again, a really broad spectrum. You as the applicator are gonna make that decision. However, remember, does control ants at 0.3 ounces per thousand square feet. So don't overuse it. This stuff costs a lot of money, right? And um, you may not need as much as you think you need. So we're gonna go out and take a look at a couple little mounds. I'm gonna sprinkle some around. I'm gonna give you an idea of what a bandwidth application with this product is as well. So this carpenter bee is following me around with, with this abamectin bottle. I, there's something in the bait matrix there's very little, there's very little abamectin in it, like 0 0.011, 11 one thousandths of a percent. It's on your finger. But if you can, ugh, I just don't like him there, I don't know. <laughs> so, so there's something in the bait that's really attracting this particular pest. And it probably does the same for ants, right? That's the idea. Okay, so we're going to go over and, and do an application. Okay, so we're back on the lawn. We've got the thousand square feet measured out. Remember, we did a level tablespoon of this, and it came out to 
two ounces, but a little bit more and we'd have had 0.3. I'm not going to apply here because we're really, it would be a waste of pesticide. We really don't have an ant issue in this section. There's other parts of this property where we're going to do an application. But I want to give you an idea. So if this was full, wait, I got an idea. Hold on. Okay, so I got some sand. So this sand's going to represent this product. Kind of a rounded tablespoon thousand square feet so we have an option we can broadcast it you know sprinkle it i'm see how high i was we had a little drift issue there mm -hmm. bad move but it really wasn't pesticide so i wasn't paying attention like i should have been you want to keep this down low another way to do it also this sand is very fine it's going to be it, this drops faster this product or you could go through this thousand square feet and hit little mounds if you wanted to, if you wanted to spend that time. But I just wanted to give you an idea what a thousand square feet is and how little product you need. A lot of baits are like this. A lot of baits will say on the label, five ounce, point five ounces, one ounce per thousand square feet. Not very much pesticide at all. It's necessary to control the pest. So don't overdo it. You know the old saying, you can only kill them once. We have a couple little ant mounds over here, 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 and here. Some people call these mound ants, field ants. But let's take a look if we can shake them up a little. I don't know if we can. I don't see any around today, but that mound is totally active because it's built up. You'll see in a, when, a, when a mound collapses, that means the colony's dead in there. So we're gonna just do a little bit of measure. Now remember the label says I can use <clears throat> up to 1.5 ounces per mound that's a lot because I only have about 0.2 here so I'm not even gonna I'm not gonna use all of this on one mound I'm just gonna sprinkle a little around there's another mound there there's another mound there and you know be frugal with it out here we got some ants moving over here there's a mound it's a nice hot day so the ants are moving see I don't know if you can see this but they hide in there under the grass. You wouldn't notice. There's a lot more ant ant mounds here than you. Can you get a shot of that? There's a lot more ant mounds here than you think. Um, so this would be a good, you know. I mean, I'm not in any hurry today, and I'm not trying to do this to, you know. I'm not making money as a pesticide applicator here. But if you were, you wouldn't want to go through the grass and find every little mound. You'd probably use a broadcast application in this situation. But. I don't have to do that. We can take our time and look for a couple more. So they love the heat. This part of the this part of the property has a lot. Of, can you get a shot in there on those ants at all? Probably. Yep. They're moving around. A lot more activity in this particular mound. And we'll just sprinkle. And we got more over here. I mean, I don't know. These things are like boulders. To the size of these ants, I would imagine an ant doesn't have to even eat one of these granules. So I think it's a lot. Using 1.5 ounces is probably an awful lot to use. So this is a general use pesticide. Um, if you're doing this in a commercial application, you do have to make an application record of it. And these mounds uh, we'll come back and check these mounds out maybe tomorrow or the next day and we'll see if any of the baits gone We've got some good shots of it and we'll come back and also see if they've started to collapse at all Okay, so you can see here this was treated a couple days ago with a product and this is where an ant mound was. It's all flattened out now. There's no ants crawling around it. So just coming right back over, we have a mound here. This is totally active. And as I'm holding this in front of my face, I'm realizing in that previous video where the carpenter bee was coming after it, this stuff smells like fish food. Are you supposed to do this? Yeah, it smells like fish food. But um, it's, it's pretty stinky, and I think insects really have a good sense of smell, so that's probably why I was being followed around. Um, I'm going to treat a couple more of these mounds, and then we're going to look at a broadcast, or rather a um, bandwidth application.
Now you have to be careful with this stuff. You don't want to put it out. It does say on the label, you know, don't let cats and dogs eat it. Um, there are no cats and dogs on this property. The owner has no pets. Uh, but, you know, you'd want to be aware of that. You wouldn't want to do a big broadcast application with a lot of kitties around. So let's take a look at a bandwidth application. Come right over here. We'll just continue on. Um, the label says, sprinkle lightly one to two feet out from the house. So my foot is about a foot, actually. So we're going to come out two feet. So that's about two feet. And it says approximately on the label. So we don't actually have to measure it, but we're going to stay within that two feet just to make sure. Some states don't mind if you take this product and go out beyond the two feet. But you have to check with your state because some states say, well, if you're doing a structural application and the label says you only can go one to two feet out, that's it. But other states are much more lenient. They're like, go out as far as you want if you see ants. So you have to check with your regulations in the particular state you're working. So this says sprinkle lightly. We've got all, I'm going to sprinkle lightly. Now, I just applied 0.3 ounces of it with uh, the tablespoon before. So I got a feel for this now, and I know that I didn't come anywhere near using even a tenth of that. I just sprinkled lightly, just a few little pellets out there. And that's what the manufacturer of this product says you need to control the ants in the house. So time will tell. Uh, your experience with the product or other products is going to let you know how effective it is. But what I really want to caution you on is making sure that you don't over apply that you don't say, well, this is a big house, I'm going to go put a whole bunch of this stuff out. Because let's think, let's do some math. I'll try to do the math in my head, though it's never been my strong point. Remember, we're, we're, we're working on that 1,000 square foot general application, 0.4 ounces per 1,000 square feet. So let's say a house is 40 feet long, and we're doing a two-foot band. 40 feet a good one? Let's use 50 because I might can do that better in my head. So 50 times 2 feet, and now we do it on both sides of the house, right? So 2 times 50 is 100, 2 times 50 is 100, and let's say the house is 40 feet wide. 2 times 40 is 80, and 2 times 40 is 80. So we got 160, 80 and 80, plus we got 200. That's 360, right? 360 square feet around the house. So 0.3 ounces or this tablespoon for a typical 40 by 30 foot, maybe a ranch house, all you're going to use is a tablespoon around the whole house. So be very careful not to over apply the product. So it's been about a week since we did some ant mound treatments with um, a product called Advance and we put it out on these little mounds down here and one of the ways to tell if the product, the active ingredient which was abamectin in that product is working is mounds are usually like this. If you see them collapse where they're flat that means there's no ant activity because on a daily basis 24 hours a day those ants are pushing up little little granules of dirt that fall in their mound and they're, they fall into the ground where their chambers are and they keep pushing them up and that's what makes the little mound. So let's take a look right over here. Um, we put some ant bait out here was a mound and you can see it's totally flat. The ants have abandoned it. Here was another mound and it's also flat. And we, if we find an active mound we'll show you just to here we go, down here, totally flat, no ants around. Here's the little abamectin granule. So it's still out there, it's still working if other ants come in the area. Let's move down a little. We had some in the grass, didn't we? Ah, here we go. So let's take a hit on this. The gr and let's take a look and see. Yep, this one's dead too. No ants floating around in there. And we have another one here. So pretty much this area, you know, we only put little tiny amounts out, you know. We didn't put like a tablespoon on every mound. We just put a few grains out every time. Even though the label called for more, we could have used 
really five, six times more than we used. But in my mind, ants are tiny. Some of those granules of uh, advance were bigger than an ant. So I don't think, you know, you have to have one granule for every ant that's there. But that's, that's my opinion. It seems to have worked. You can see here, totally flat, done totally flat these were ant mounds now uh, now let's see if we can find an act no, these are flat too so it looks like now this mound isn't flat but I don't think it's active I think it's on its way out it just hasn't had a chance to die they don't know they're dead yet you know let's come down maybe we can find a section not here obviously yeah so this you can see this is still a little active it's still mounted the hole is clean so it's because they're going in and out of it. See, here are the ants. Now, we didn't bait down here. So I don't know how far this particular ant forages, but you will find that, you know, if they forage far enough, they'll find that abamectin that we put out, and they will definitely die. 